guys, how are you? I hope you're having a great Monday. I'm Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and I am going to be painting a wreath attachment or porch sign attachment, whatever you want to call it, live with you guys today. So um, I hope you guys will join me. Okay, so we are going to be painting this really cute little summer wheelbarrow. It's got sunflowers and little um, flowers that could be any kind of flower, I suppose, right here. And it has the words, hello, summer etched into it. If you're new to door hangers or anything like that. So um, we sell these in my shop. They are made of quarter inch MDF. They are laser etched and the etching design in the top makes it super easy to paint. So we can paint it step by step. And um, I wanted to talk to you guys today while I paint about what you see behind me. This is the uh, fall door hanger challenge design that we will be painting inside my group on August 17th. And if you want to join us to learn how to paint that, it's only $10 to participate. Um, now, that does not get you the wooden cutout mailed to you, but you do get a 20% off discount code to get your own wood cutout, and you can get them in three different sizes. Let me just show you real quick. This is the 12-inch size, like a wreath attachment size, and then we've also got the 20-inch, which is probably not going to fit underneath the video here. It's probably going to take up the entire screen but I'll hold it up in front of me so you can see the difference. So 20 inch or 12 inch, you can choose if you wanna paint it door hanger size or um, wreath attachment size, and you can join along with us in the challenge. Now, the challenge is just $10, and that gets you the printable template. So if you're crafty enough or know somebody who's crafty enough to cut your wood for you, you can get the um, printable template um, included with your $10 purchase and you can print it out yourself, cut your own wood, and save a ton of money. Let me just walk you through how I would paint this one. I like to use egg cartons to hold my paint. Um, I love because the little foam egg cartons keep my paint separated and um, it doesn't dry out as fast. And I use all Americana Deco Art paints. They are um, a matte paint. These are not the glossy ones. I prefer the matte. Um, but these can be found at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You can also use cheaper brands from other stores, but that is the one that I highly recommend. And you'll just need also a little set of brushes like um, they don't have to be expensive brushes either. You can just get the ones at Walmart or whatever. But I have some in my shop if you need them. And I'm going to be using, first of all, the color Laguna. This is a really pretty teal color. And looky here, I can paint, paint directly on top of my lettering. And you can still see the lettering through the paint. So that makes it to where I don't have to be super careful. Um, because I know a lot of people sometimes complain about having shaky hands or they're just not skilled with a paintbrush. And so they feel like they're going to get the paint everywhere. I'm a messy painter. I'm a messy cook too. When I cook in the kitchen, there is uh, spices and salt shook all over the place. I just, I'm a messy, messy person in general, I think. I, I struggle with that a lot. So even when I paint like this, I know that um, it doesn't really matter if I stay inside the lines because um, the paint is going to, like the stages that I teach it in, the color stages that we go through, like painting the background and whatnot, it's going to cover up all of my boo-boos and mistakes. So it's not a big deal. Okay, now we've got the background color completely painted in the Laguna color. We're gonna rinse our brush. Um, so next I'm gonna paint the leaves. And I'm going to use this little color called foliage green, foliage green, foliage. I'm not sure how you say that word. I have been doing this for five years and I now teach everyone online how to paint and I enjoy it very, very much. It's not as hard as it looks. I know a lot of people tell me there's no way I could ever do that. There's not a single painting bone in my body, but I have proved a lot of those people wrong over the years by showing them um, exactly how to do it and they're usually surprised that with a little bit of instruction they can do a lot better than they think. Um, the number one problem that I see people who don't have any painting knowledge do wrong is they will start with doing all the outlining first and that's not the first step. The first step is actually painting the background. So that's what you see me doing now. I've painted the background of the wheelbarrow, the background of the leaves, so now I'm going to rinse my brush again and we're going to um, paint the sunflowers next, the backgrounds of the sunflowers. Um, so if you want to participate, somebody asked about the fall door hanger challenge and what that, what all that entails. So let me explain real quick. This is the design behind me hanging up that you see that we will be teaching during the fall door hanger challenge. It starts August 17th. Signups begin now and um, all of the fun will actually begin August 17th. 
we um, are signing you up early so that you have time to get your supplies. You have time to get your wood cut because we give you a template so that you can trace on your wood. And I have a video showing you how to use the template, how to trace it on your wood, how to cut it with a jigsaw. Now, if you have a scroll saw, you could use that also. Um, or if you have a laser cutting machine, we, we um, give you the file that you need to be able to cut it with a laser machine also. So depending on your method of cutting, we've given you all of the resources you need to be able to cut your wood yourself because that is the number one thing that I want you guys to, to learn how to do uh, as you learn how to paint is because learning to cut your own wood is going to give you so much more um, ability to be creative and to create what you want. Um, you're not pigeonholed into only being able to create things that other people have designed and are selling. And I know sometimes it can take some time before you get to that point where you feel like you're ready to start cutting your own door, door hangers. But um, let's get you painting first. And once you've kind of figured out that you can paint, then you might want to learn how to cut. So that's usually the process that people follow um, when they join my Painters Clubhouse membership. So if you're really, if you're already like convinced and you already know that you want to learn to paint, Painters Clubhouse opens back up August 25th. It's a monthly membership group where I teach how to paint door hangers. Um, Damon is an affiliate for it. And um, we've had several people from Damon's community join over the years. And so it's been fun to see um, a lot of our designs turned into wreath attachments. I do not make wreaths, so I usually use this size as a door hanger attachment or as a porch sign attachment, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Um, okay, we've gotten the background color of our sunflowers, and as you can see, let me hold it up a little closer to the camera. I did not stay inside the lines at all, but I'm not worried about it because the parts that we do next are going to cover all of that up. And all of those little etching lines won't be noticeable after we get um, the other layers of paint on there. So don't worry about that either. Um, it's important to be a mother and, you know, to, to like tend to your responsibilities. But you, I believe everyone needs something for themselves. And so if your whole life is 100% devoted to being a mom 24-7 and there, you don't have something that is your own, that's like your thing, then um, it's going to eventually take its toll on you, like emotionally, mentally. You're going to need something that is like your outlet. And so painting has become my outlet and teaching has become my outlet. And I love that like when I'm in here crafting and painting and teaching, I don't have to be mom necessarily. I don't have to be a wife in this moment. I can just be Tamara and I can just teach painting and it's just wonderful. And so I love to hear that, Nicole, that you know, learning to paint has given you a sense of, you know, self aside from being a mom. That's just wonderful. What color? Oh, Roxanne, this is called primary red. And the yellow that I used was called marigold. Yes, we do have simple videos that teach you how to cut the wood yourself, um, how to use the template. And then, of course, we have the videos showing you step by step how to paint it. So if something like this hanging up behind me looks super intimidating, I want you to know this video was actually broken down into three parts. So we're not going to paint it all in one day. We're going to break it down into three videos. The first day you will learn how to paint that buffalo plaid background. And I promise you it's not nearly as scary as it looks. We actually do it using painter's tape and baby wipes, and it's the easiest thing you've ever seen. Um, and then the second day, I teach you how to paint the pumpkins. I even teach you how to do the shading on the pumpkins, which if you're a beginner and shading is intimidating to you, you can just skip the shading part and just paint them orange and just be done with it. <laughs> it's going to be super cute anyways. But if you want to kind of um, push yourself a little bit and step out of your comfort zone, you can follow the shading instructions and learn how to shade the pumpkins. And then the third day, the third video is about the lettering and how to do the lettering on there. And so you're not going to have to hand draw or hand um, do any of this without a template or instructions. We're going to walk you through it step by step so that you um, so that you know every bit of the way what to do. There's not going to be any guessing what to do in any part of it. 
as you can see, I'm on the, these little red flowers. I'm just kind of painting right over that center line. I'm not worried about it because the center of these flowers are going to be black. And so um, it doesn't matter if the red gets over that middle line or not. <clears throat> what is the cost of the monthly class and what's it include? Vicki is asking about my Painters Clubhouse membership that I was talking about a moment ago that opens on August 25th. Um, it is $37 a month, and we have had that membership for a little over two years now. So this is actually the last chance that you'll have to sign up for Painters Clubhouse at the $37 a month cost. Um, next spring when we open it again, the cost will be going up. So because we have over two years of tutorials and trainings and wonderful things inside there. And so the value has increased dramatically over the years. And so we will be increasing the price in the future of that. But if you want to join us, you can join us on August 25th and um, the Painters Clubhouse will be opening. Okay, the next color I'm using is called Dove Gray. We're just going to paint the legs and the center of the wheelbarrow itself. And then we'll be able to get to the fun part of adding all of the patterns and details to the rest of this. Um, oh, sorry, Vicki, I didn't answer the second part of your question. So if we're talking about Painter's Clubhouse, Painter's Clubhouse is a monthly membership where I teach you how to paint door hangers and you learn how to paint two door hangers every single month. Plus, we usually provide at least one or two techniques every month where you learn like hand lettering technique or maybe buffalo plaid or leopard print or um, a bow tutorial or glitter or something, um, for instance. And sometimes it's like a, a, not even a painting technique so much as it is like a different painting project. So in August, we're going to be having a painting project involving the little ceramic trucks that you guys have probably been seeing online everywhere. So that's going to be lots of fun. Are the blanks available for the fall challenge? Yes, Cassie. Um, the blanks are available. We've actually already got several of them cut in advance, and they're already boxed up and ready to ship out. And so um, when you join the challenge, if you want to purchase the blank, it is an additional cost. The challenge is just $10. Um, so if you're going to cut your own wood, that's all you're going to have to pay. But if you need the blank shipped to you, um, you will get a 20% off discount code to go and purchase the blank after you've joined the challenge. And you can use that code and get your blank. What kind of brush are you using? It looks seriously easy, but I bet the right brush helps. Pam, the right brush makes a world of difference. Um, this one is actually just a flat tip brush that's maybe a half inch wide or so. Um, I've actually been using it this entire time and I just keep re-rinsing it. It's, it's like my favorite brush. I use it all the time. I use other brushes too, but um, this one, I get nice smooth strokes and I can kind of paint faster with it. If you're an inexperienced painter, you may want to like switch around different kinds of brushes until you like to me, it's different for everybody. Everybody kind of has a favorite brush and the more you paint and try different brushes, the more you'll figure out which one is your favorite. And so I want you to use the one that works for you. Okay, we're almost done getting all the background colors painted. I've got to paint the black circles in the middle of these red flowers. And then we can start adding the brown on the sunflowers and then all of the fun little details. Do we buy the monthly supplies from you? Vicki, you can if you want to. You can also get all of your painting. I don't sell the paints, but I do sell brushes. Um, you can just buy supplies at like your local craft store. Um, but if you're wanting to buy the wooden blanks already cut, then yes, you can just buy them from me every month. And as a member of Painters Clubhouse, you get a 20% off discount code that you can use year round as many times as you want in our shop um, so that you can always buy your wood blanks or whatever you need. How long is the door hanger challenge open for? Melissa, it begins August 17th. So you have from now until then to get signed up. But I highly recommend that if you're going to do it, go ahead and sign up now. That way you can go ahead and get your supplies, your template, and everything ready. And then on the 17th, when the first video begins, you'll be ready to just sit down and paint. I've had so many people over the years um, tell me that this challenge was like the thing that got them painting. That they have, were like scared to try it, but that after they joined the challenge, it was like they suddenly felt like, 
empowered. And there was one lady last fall, and she's now a member of my Painters Clubhouse. She came to my event in Nashville that I had back in March. And she told me, she said, I participated in your fall door hanger challenge last year. And she said, I live in a tiny town. I think she told me 300 people in her town. That's how tiny her town is. And after she did the fall challenge, she turned around and sold like 10 of those same door hangers that she had learned to paint in the challenge. Because by the way, everything that I teach you to paint in my challenges, on my page, and inside my Facebook group and my membership and everything, I encourage you guys to go out and sell them. You have full rights to go outside, go and sell what you paint using my designs and what I teach you. And so Amy went out and she sold um, 10 of the door hangers that we painted in last year's fall challenge. And then she ended up starting a business um, and she in her tiny town of 300 people had been up until COVID started. She had been having eight to 10 parties, I think, a month in this little town. And she has been making some serious money um, on her little business in this little bitty town. It just amazes me. But that just goes to show that it doesn't matter if you live in a tiny town of 300 or not. When there's nothing to do, people will show up for a paint party or something to have something to do. And then they end up making new friends and having the time of their lives. And you end up making some great money on the side. So I'm so excited for her. And I know that's going to happen for so many of you who participate in this challenge. When I first started painting, I don't think there was anybody teaching painting online. And so it was kind of disheartening because I didn't know who to learn from or where to learn. And the only way you learn is by usually emulating others. Now, I know there's some people who naturally they can like just play around with something and learn it themselves. But um, I am self-taught, but by looking at what others have created. And so through that method, I was able to teach myself a lot. And so I'm trying to pass on all of the knowledge and things that I've learned over the years to others because there was nobody there to teach me in the beginning. Okay, let's do the next part. And you're gonna need a sticky note or a scrap piece of paper and a sponge pouncer. Um, these came from the, dollar, the Walmart craft department. We also sell these in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. Now I've got a little sticky note because I'm gonna dip my sponge pouncer in some white paint scraping off the excess and I'm going to set my little little sticky note right there and I'm using it kind of like painter's tape. I'm using it so I can block part of that polka dot from getting all over the flower. And then I'm going to do a couple more here and there. Let's do one kind of half on and half off here. Maybe do another one here. Let me turn this like that. There you go. So that just puts some cute little dots in the middle of those little black flowers and it makes it pop. Okay, let's do this part. Maybe start with one right there and then do another one half on and half off here and there and there. And just keep layering them till you like how many you got. Now that one kind of went over a little bit. I'm not that worried about it because we're going to go back later and add some accents that are going to cover it up. And if, I, if it still looks messy, I can take some red paint and touch it up. Let's put one here. Now, when you're using these little sponge daubers, you may get just a little bit of bubbles in your paint. And it's totally okay. That's normal. Just leave it be. Don't freak out. What do you use to trace the stencil? Um, Erica, oh, I know what you're saying. You're talking about the door hanger templates that you trace onto the wood. Use graphite paper. I actually have a big, huge sheet of graphite paper that I use that I got from Amazon, and I have it linked in my Amazon affiliate shop. Okay, let's do some little accents on our sunflower. I've got this color. It's called Honey Brown, and I got a real tiny round tip brush. I'm just going to dip it out of the lid because I only need just a tiny bit of it. And see, we're just going to create almost like a little hashtag type pattern in the middle of our flowers. Do you have a special printer to enlarge your door hangers before cutting? No, Wanda. We actually, when we when we um, give you guys the file, it comes as a, it's called a block poster file. It's already in PDF format. It's already sized, enlarged, so that it will print out 
door hanger size, which is roughly 20 inches. And so when you get it and you print it, it will print out so that you make a door hanger this large. You won't have to scale it or anything like that. Just have your printer already set to print at 100%. And when you print it out, it will come out on like, I think it's six or eight sheets of paper and you'll tape them together. And I've got a, I've got a video showing you exactly how to do it. So it's not going to be complicated, even though I'm explaining it in a complicated fashion. Karen said, can I purchase a pre-cut etched hanger like you did for the lemon? Yes. So let me show you real quick in case you missed the very beginning of the video. We, this is the etched blank for the challenge that we are doing. This one is the 20 inch and this one is the 12 inch. And so the one hanging behind me is a 20 inch size. And so if you want it already etched with the lines and everything on it, get this size or get this type right here. And um, of course, if you order it not etched, it's going to look like this with nothing on the back or nothing on the front or the back, really. But if you're willing to cut your own, you're going to save a ton of money. You'll only have to pay $10. You'll get the template. You'll get the videos explaining exactly how to do all of it. Okay, let's finish this door hanger. I'm actually going to use paint pens to finish this up. I don't do this every time, but I do sometimes. Um, these pens are my absolute favorite. They're called Una Posca, not pasta like spaghetti, Posca pens. They are on Amazon. They come in a set of six and you get three sizes of black and three sizes of white. Um, this is the medium size black. So I'm going to show you. Regina says, how do you get it to wreath size? Um, now, now that I think about it, I don't know if that file has the wreath size in it, but you can, Regina, take the JPEG image of any of my designs. It comes in the file, upload it to blockposters.com and size it to whatever size you want. Now, blockposters.com is completely free and you can... Um, size it to print on however many pages you want and it will tell you before you print it how big it's going to be super simple what size is your favorite in the paint pens i use this medium one a lot it's the 3m i think three millimeter no sorry five millimeter okay so let me show you what i do with it i go around and i outline a lot of the design so you can outline your flowers, and this is the part that covers up your boo-boos. So if you got outside the lines and you're a messy painter like I am, tracing it like this with a paint pen all of a sudden makes it like, oh, wow, she, um, she did a great job. Like it hides all of those little goof-ups. Um, I kind of think of it like adding the lines on to a coloring book after you have colored. It makes it look like I stayed inside the lines. And this part doesn't have to be perfect either. You can trace right on top of the etching lines that are on the blank before you paint it, or you can freestyle it. Right now, I'm pretty much just tracing on top of the etching lines. And then we'll go back in in a moment and we will add the lettering and some highlights and things. It's, it's pretty much like writing with a Sharpie. Super easy. And you can use a Sharpie for this, but your Sharpie is going to dry out a lot faster than a paint pen will. Isn't it amazing how the black suddenly makes all of the colors pop? The colors almost look bolder because of the black outlines. Whoops, I got outside the lines there a little bit. Trace down the edge. There we go. Now we can just paint our letters. Now I'm going to do the lettering in white because part of the lettering overlaps the black wheel here. Do you see that? Let me show you up close. So at the beginning, I showed you this is an etched blank. And see the letters E and R actually overlap the wheel. So if I paint them in black, you won't be able to see that part right there. So that's why we're going to do the letters in white. So I'm going to switch. Let me see if this paint pen's the right size. It's the smaller one. 